All right. So the big story has to do with the Jets. Zach Rosenblatt is a senior writer for The Athletic, and this all unfolded yesterday afternoon. Thought it was going to be a quiet afternoon there, Zach. And then all of a sudden, a couple of tweets come out, and all of a sudden, here we go with Zach Wilson and the Jets, and Aaron Rodgers in there as well, and Robert Sala. So where do you want to start with this of, if you're, oh, how about this? You're Zach Wilson. What do you do today? Uh, if I'm Zach Wilson, I probably am addressing my teammates, I would say. And, and you know, because especially if they do plan on playing him and if his teammates have this image of him that he doesn't want to play for them and fight for them, then I imagine that probably doesn't sit well in that locker room. So I, I, I would imagine he would have to address his teammates right now. OK, but Robert Sala said this isn't true. That's not what Robert Sala said. Robert Sala said that Zach Wilson walked into his office 30 minutes before that to say that he wants to play. That's doesn't change everything that happened before that. And I, I, I don't think Robert Sala de- denied what happened. He just didn't address it directly is how I would say. Okay. What would you ask Robert Sala today? What would I ask Robert Sala today? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. Like, how do you keep a guy on the roster that doesn't want to play? I think would be the big question. And, you know, it, obviously Zach has changed his mind um, smartly. And I, I, obviously there are a lot of factors there. I, they wanted Aaron, they asked Aaron Rodgers to call him and and talk to him about coming back and making him understand that this would be a bad look for his career if he re- refused to play and and maybe that that message got through or the report made it made it get through but I, I I think ultimately yeah Robert Sala had probably had to sit there and decide if they were comfortable keeping him around the team if he doesn't want to play for them. Who do you think is the quarterback for the Jets next game? My prediction would be Trevor Simeon this week, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if Zach was in the number two and came into the game or started the week after that kind of thing. How did this start? Like, when do you get a heads up that Zach is telling multiple people from players, coaches, staff members? Like, what's the genesis of this? Yeah, so I, I'd heard that even before this last Falcons game over the last week, I they kind of gave him the message of, practice as if you're going to have to play at some point, like that kind of thing. And, and then what I was told, uh, this was yesterday morning is um, they went to him about the possibility of playing again. And, and he, and he, again, as we reported, he expressed some reluctance about doing it. I think the offensive line thing and the fact and the risk of injury was a factor because I think everybody in that building, including Zach knows he's not going to be here next year. So I think maybe there's part of it where he wants to kind of protect himself for as he tries to find a new job this off season. But um, yeah, so I think it's, it starts there and they, they go to him and, you know, he talks about with staff coaches, teammates about how he's reluctant. And then after some Aaron Rodgers discussions and, and everything else that's transpired, I, I think he's kind of c- come to Jesus to a degree. But this is career suicide, isn't it? Yeah. I, and, and that's the thing. I mean, ultimately, you know, maybe he didn't think this would get out, um, is probably part of it, but, um, ultimately if you're not willing to play like this is kind of the consequence that comes with that and so now he there's gonna be more pressure on him frankly to go out there and perform when he is out there yeah i just wonder like what team's gonna go yeah come on in um even as a backup quarterback what if our team isn't that good or what if there's you know uh, offensive line is not good do you, do, are you gonna say that i mean he wants self-preservation but he's killing his self-preservation with this short-term, long-term. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand what's making him tick now and, and what what role did Aaron Rodgers play in this? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's the thing. He's going to have to go on a campaign to, like, rebuild his image around some other teams who I'm sure were probably alarmed by this report. Um, and yeah, for, like, the Aaron Rodgers side thing, like, the the whole the whole story the Jets told everybody this, this season is that they wanted – Zach to sit for the entire season, uh, learn from Aaron Rodgers, and the plan was not to play him. They emphasized we want to redshirt him this year. Like they over and over again, like we we want him to learn and sit back. And then in week one, four plays into the season, he's thrown back into the mix. They're able to, you know, fight to a four and three record with a very good defense. And then and then he gets benched. And so it, it kind of like it backfired. And you know, Aaron Rodgers wasn't around the building until recently. So it's not like they were spending a lot of time together like they had planned. And so Zach kind of felt like maybe he was on an island and and at the end, you know, and I haven't heard this directly from him, but I, I imagine he probably feels like he's being scapegoated to a degree because he's gotten benched so many times and their offense is struggling and they keep saying, how oh, they don't have their quarterback and that's why. And, and so Zach feels maybe scapegoated and maybe that was a factor in all of this. But yeah, you know, I, I think Aaron Rodgers is a big looming part of this, of course. And 
it, it just kind of like the way the season went was not the team's plan and it, and it really backfired. And I think obviously, and this has been a big discussion in New York when Aaron goes down, um, they never went out and seriously considered signing another quarterback to fill in for him uh, to, to replace Zach if, if and when Zach struggled. And they stuck with this group, Tim Boyle brought in Trevor Simeon and it, it kind of like derailed their season. Okay. Whose decision was it to not go out and actually get a viable backup quarterback? Um, I, I mean, I, I think that that probably comes from higher up uh, GM, you know, maybe conversation with Robert Hall. I think they, they thought they could get by with a great defense and a great running game and they could survive with that kind of like they did to start out last year when they went six and three, but it kind of fell apart quicker this year as they started getting all these crazy amount of injuries on the offensive line. You have guys like Alan Lazard, not really living up to their contract, the weapons outside of like Garrett Wilson haven't really performed. And so everything kind of backfired in it. I think they would probably admit, maybe not publicly that they made a mistake, not like bringing in another veteran. Oh boy. Good stuff, Zach. Uh, have fun today. I'm, I'm anxious to. <laughs> do, is Zach Wilson going to talk to the media? Have you heard anything? I imagine he will this week. I don't know what day because the, the starting quarterback usually talks on Wednesday, but he's not. We don't think he's the starting quarterback. We don't know right now. But okay. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. That's Zach Rosenblatt, the Jets senior writer for the Athletic.